Welcome back. So if you watched the Super Bowl this year, you might have seen this United Airlines commercial. Take a look. I know most of us are watching other people's teams play today, but today is all they get. Tomorrow is yours and every day after that until your team is here winning it all. This is about believing. Believing so hard that you book your flight to next year's big game before the season even starts. Because believing that hard can change everything. When Scott Kirby became the CEO of United Airlines back in 2019, one of the biggest changes he made was getting rid of the change fees during the pandemic. Now, if you travel a lot for business, you know the pain of paying to change your flight. It's just irritating. But it isn't just the pain of paying money. It's also the psychological pain of having no choice. Kirby understood this pain and the psychology behind the way we make decisions. When we have a choice, we feel a greater sense of control. And when we feel like we're in control, we're more satisfied with our decisions. But you know, decision making is a quirky thing. We love choices, just not too many. Can you explain that? The number of options we have significantly influences our decision making process. The paradox of choice is that when presented with too many choices, we're actually less likely to make a decision. In a famous study conducted back in 2000, a display table was set up in a local food market with 24 different kinds of jams. Then on another day, the display was reduced to six different kinds. Can you guess which one led to more sales? While the big display with 24 jams generated much more interest, people were far less likely to buy than in the case of the smaller display, about 10 times less likely to purchase. I did not know that. Too much choice paralyzes us into not choosing at all, or what researchers call decision avoidance. And decision avoidance isn't just triggered by the number of choices we have, it's also influenced by when we make decisions. So here's an example. Three prisoners appear before a parole board. The first is serving a 30 month sentence for fraud. The second is serving a 16 month sentence for assault. And the third is serving a 30 month sentence for fraud. Now, all three prisoners have completed at least two thirds of their sentences, but the parole board will grant freedom to only one. Which one is more likely to get parole? In a famous study, researchers analyzed more than 1,100 decisions over the course of a year to determine whether judicial rulings are swayed by extraneous variables that should have no bearing on legal decisions. They found that the likelihood of a favorable ruling is greater at the beginning of the workday or after a food break than later in the sequence of cases. Prisoners who appeared early in the morning received parole about 70% of the time, while those who appeared late in the day were paroled less than 10% of the time. Check out this data set from the research. The circled points are the first decision in each of the sessions, and the dotted line indicates where they had food breaks. As the day wears on, the judges show an increased tendency to deny parole or do nothing as the safer option. New research has uncovered a parallel effect in healthcare. Doctors are often more likely to prescribe unnecessary medications later in the day. The bottom line is that doctors and judges are human, just like all of us, and we all experience the quirks of decision making. The more choices you make throughout the day, the harder each one becomes for your brain, and eventually it starts to look for shortcuts. One is to act impulsively instead of thinking through to the decision. The second is to do nothing. Instead of agonizing over the decision, you just avoid it. See, we have a finite store of mental energy for decision making and impulse control, and it's impossible to make decision after decision without paying a neurological price. Maybe the best way to make decisions is to know when not to make decisions. That is so cool.